Hey guys, how's it going? It's Mike here. So we're getting close to being done seeing. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we're all getting a little tired. We're all starting to hallucinate. Um, we're starting to make animal noises to each other. And the scary part is, is we're responding appropriately. Someone's making this noise of a cow, the other one a donkey, and uh, it's working. Basically, if guys like, yeah, I need fertilizer, can you meet me at the West End? But it actually somehow it comes up. And it works. I have no idea. That's what it sounds like on the radio, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're pretending that didn't happen. So, uh, yeah, okay, anyway, I've been uh, ripping around in this RX. I think I got around uh, 340 so hours on this thing. I kind of wanted to run it for a while to get. Get a good feel for it, you know. Hold on, I gotta turn my radio off. And uh, so we're seeding away. So I thought I would just go through a few pros and cons with you guys. What do you think? There's actually, I think, a few more cons than there is pros. So, uh, John, your guys, please don't check out. Um, I'm unbiased. I own all the colors. I'm just telling you how it is. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. Con number one is this transmission. This transmission is by far the worst transmission I've ever run. It is the leggiest, doggiest, jerkiest thing you can you can ever run. I've run everything on uh, manual, custom, full auto. I've spent a lot of time in this thing. Um, the only thing I haven't done is recalibrate the transmission. Um, but otherwise, and it's not just this tractor. We got all the tractors, and they're all the same. So I kind of feel like uh, I don't really feel like taking the time to recalibrate the transmission. So. So anyway, we're moving on. So this thing is so doggy that, uh, say you're trying to catch a combine out there at five mile an hour, by the time you get this thing shifted up to five mile an hour, or 10 mile an hour to catch the combine, yeah, it's, like it take you forever to get there. It's like, like you go pop, 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 and it's like, and like, you'll go a quarter mile down the field before you ever get to your final gear. Like that's how bad it is. And then you gotta start shifting things down. Then you go pop, 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 and start shifting it back down. It's like, and then for some reason, you can even have it at 1,700 RPM. You can even have 1,400 RPM, and it will still rev itself to 2,200 RPM to make the shift for absolutely no reason. You can have the drill out of the ground. It, it just for absolutely no reason. It's just like, it's just like, it's like, like, I'm not making this crap up. Like, it's, it's, it's bad. I don't know how you guys grain carve these things. Like, you can't grain carve this tractor. You just, it cannot be done. So the guys who are trying to do it, my hat off. All right, con number two, the power on this thing, back, significantly from a case, 620, like, significantly, like, bad. So, yeah, there's obviously, we all know there's, there's things you can do about that, but uh, I'm just being a straight shooter with you. It's, it feels like it's about 80 horsepower back. Um, con number three, con number three is the weight. This thing is by far too light. We even weighted it up to the same weight, about 60,500 pounds uh, to a case. So we put the front bracket on the front, we put 16 suitcase weights up there, 13 suitcase weights back there, and uh, so we, we, we weighted it appropriately to the case. But uh, yeah, it still, it still slips. Like, there's hills that I can go up and go around a rock pile on my case that I cannot do with this tractor. It, I'll, I'll just, I took videos of it. You'll just. You'll just slip and curve it right off the hill. Like you, you can't get up. So we kind of, I'll show you guys something. We kind of started, uh, hold on here. I'm gonna show you what we put on here. We put these puppies on. 2,250 pounds this thing is. So one on each side. So now we're actually by far over a case weight. So I just put these things on and it did definitely knock a few points to slip off. Um, I, unfortunately, I'm out of hills. I can't take it up a hill. So I'm out of hills. It's just good field now. But anyway, you could put you could put more of these on. Heck, I, I even joked around with the sales guys. Can you imagine you just line these suckers with suitcase weights all the way across here? I think the problem is, is this back end is too light. It's like a 60-40 split. Where a case, I think, is like a 50-50. Isn't a case 50-50? Well, there's goofy plastic fuel tank. That doesn't weigh nothing. 
So anyway, this back end's too light. You could put more weight here. But why? I think you need it on the back. All right. Let's, I gotta get going here, guys. Oh, by the way, I'm pulling a 84 foot, 12 inch base, mid-row banders, um, 1340 cart. Absolutely love the cart, just saying. And the drill. Just wish I could pull a little bit better. So, that conveyor, awesome. Weighs about as much as a dead yak. So, uh, it is a bit of a challenge if the wind starts pushing on you. So, we've, we've talked about uh, the transmission, con number transmission, con number two is the horsepower, con number three is the weight. We think we might have tried to fix some of that weight issue. Hold on guys, I just gotta kinda get back to what I'm doing here. People are trying to text and call me. I got trucks lined up at the field. Goodness. That guy's probably trying to figure out what the crap I'm doing. <laughs> All right, okay, now that we're going here, let's talk about con number four. Con number four is the roughness. This thing is smoother than a case on the road by far with this, it is, I don't know why, but the cab suspension is just by far smoother. But in the field, it is that again rougher than a case, it is just, crazy like if I didn't already have my wisdom teeth surgically removed they would have fallen out 300 hours ago I'm not making that up like say I'm trying to get to the corner of the field and I'm just like going across these drill runs I'll pick up my radio and I'll be like hey guys I'm coming to the southwest corner could you please meet me over there with the fertilizer and see thank you very much like that's how bad it is I'm not making that up I think I almost pulled a hernia <laughs> oh, shut up, Mike. Anyway, um, so that was con number four. It's quite rough in the field. Uh, con number five. Meanwhile, you guys are like, oh, my friend, this guy's got five cons on a John Deere. Is that even a thing? All the John Deere guys are like, I'm out. We gone. But no, it's true. Con number five. The cab. Now, the cab is a nice cab. I'll give it a pro here when we get there, but what can you guys see? Look at this, they, they put a 7210R front wheel sys cab on a four wheel drive. What's wrong with that? It was never ha meant to have a front wheel sys cab on a four wheel drive tractor. Can you guys see my drill? What is this thing? Like eight inches across? Like we have to play fine wall though here. Like really, like what is this thing? Like look how wide that is, like what is that thing? Holy cow. Chase. So that's con number five. All right, let's talk about a pro before I lose my freaking mind out here. Pro number one, the air breather. That air breather, I have gone 344 hours and I have not blown that thing out. I have not changed that air filter. No light has gone off. It's been working awesome. If this was a case, I would be on my third set of air filters by now. All the case guys are like, yeah, that's true, bro. That's true. It's true. Con number, or pro number two, I have, had, I have not had an SCR fault. I have not had an error code. I have not had anything going wrong with this tractor. They say uh, nothing runs like a deer. Well, seems to be true right now. I've had no issues with this thing. If this was a case, I would be. Uh, I would at least have a case guy out at least three times per tractor by now. And I don't mean just SCR faults. I mean like mechanical issues. Like we've piled up rear ends engines, transmissions, all on brand new equipment. So don't give me that lip. Oh, you're running it too hard, boy. You're weighing it down too much, boy. You're pulling too big of a load back there, boy. Shut up! It's not true. Brand new, 20 hours out, blows the engine up. Explain that to me, exactly. Moving on. Pro number three, the cab. The cab is actually quite, uh, it's quite nice. It's got the carpet in here. It's quite, quite dirty right now. But uh, um, the sound system is awesome. John Deere's have amazing subwoofers. It's great. I pretty much just buy a John Deere for the subwoofer. Um, yeah, the cab is actually quite nice, though it has zero visibility. Okay, guys. Um, pro number four. Pro number four is the uh, little things in life. Your hydraulic outlets, you know, they light up. They, these things light up. That's awesome. 
awesome. It's little things. It's kind of like the fin, the sliding seat. I like that. Oh my goodness. Uh, 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 like, I'm not making this up, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna try and turn on one headland. Last time I did that, I may have drug a quarter line of fence. Just saying. Not saying it's true, I'm just saying it may have happened. I just gotta get turned around here, guys. I'll try and go quicker, I'll even shift up. There it goes. Okay. Like, I think he wants to load. Like, I, sh I, I gotta get my crap together. I'm almost done this review here. I just gotta get turned around. Okay. Um, so, we've talked about the cab. Um, also, another con. I think, what are we, con number six now? I can't remember. Is this fuel tank? It's a plastic fuel tank. We all know that it doesn't weigh anything, and apparently, well, it should because we're looking for weight back there. But when you're going across the drill ridges and that tank's full, go. Yeah, what's the integrity of that after a while? Exactly my point. Exactly my point. Um, another pro, I like the tracks. I like how high the t how tall the tracks are. I don't know why. It's just weird. Doesn't make sense to me. I get it too. But I like that. Otherwise, guys. Oh yeah, little things like your mirrors. They actually go in and out. I know. Trip me right out. Like I was tripping balls the first time I saw that, and I did it by accident. Um. Oh, one last con. Well, the con number seven, the seat. You pay six hundred some thousand dollars, and you don't get a freaking air conditioned seat. You can get them in the combines because we have them. Come on, John Deere. Case has had that for years. Come on, pour your crap together. Oh, and another con. Con number eight. We have eight cons already. Ooh, count. This thing burns a ridiculous amount of diesel and death. The diesel, I can understand. It's Cummins 15 liter. It's going to suck it back a little bit. But death, I can't get one day of that death tank. It takes two tanks of death for my fuel. Two tanks of death. That's something I would ex expect in a Fent, not a John Deere. Come on, John Deere. How long have you been building tractors for? Like 100 years? Is there like a 100 year symbol in this thing, I think? It might be somewhere. Seriously. Oh, and then the John Deere guys, the sales guys are like, you know what, but on the new ones, and this is a new one, but on the new ones that come, they're gonna put a bigger death tank on there for you. Maybe you can get one day. Well, thank you, John Deere. Looking out for our interests. Oh, and you can do the software update. I think it has something to do with hydraulics and gain you another 30 to 50 horsepower. John Deere will also do that for you for power. For only a measly 30 to $40,000 per unit. Thank you again, John Deere. I can always tell that you always have our backs. All right. I actually don't mind the tractor, it's got quite a few flaws, but uh, basically guys, it comes down to your dealerships. We have amazing dealers, we've got amazing John Deere, amazing Fent, and amazing Case guys. Even their service, sales, awesome. Thumbs up to you guys, thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, basically, we kind of made the switch from red. I've ran red all my life, so I know it well. It's my first year on a Deere. Um, made the switch because we couldn't afford to run red anymore. It just wouldn't stay running. And I don't mean just little stuff, but major components. So, uh, we're just going to try this out and see how it goes. Might throw a little more weight on there yet. We'll see. And, uh, power issues. Well, we all know what we got to do about that. And, uh, yeah. So anyway, we're moving on. You guys have yourself a good one. Thanks for tuning in. Comment. Hey, subscribe. Because the more subscribers I get, then I can go into dealerships and maybe they'll give me some equipment to, uh, review for you guys. So, I just have a good one. Later. Woohoo! What?